First Baptist Charlestown, we exist to see the hope of Jesus Christ transform Charlestown by providing every person with an opportunity to hear and respond to the good news of Jesus and equipping them to grow up into maturity in Christ. We seek to accomplish this through authentic worship, shown through worshiping together as a church family. Transparent community, shown through community groups where we live out the one another's. Intentional discipleship, shown through discipleship groups where we train disciples to be disciple makers. And living on mission, by using our gifts to serve in ministry and taking the gospel to where we live, work, and play. If you have any questions about our mission or vision, ask a pastor, fill out a connect card, or scan the QR code found in the bulletin. I want to welcome everybody to, I don't know if this is on or not, am I on? Hello, hello, it's green, but I don't hear it come out of speakers. Good to go? All right. Hey, I want to welcome everybody to First Baptist Charlestown this morning. Uh, we don't believe it's by any accident that God has brought us into this place today. And our prayer is that we would have a fresh encounter with Jesus Christ, that the entire service today would be about lifting Him up, about glorifying Him. And so we want to shine the spotlight on Him. And if, if you're here today, we're thankful for you here, that you're here. Uh, I want to encourage you to pray for uh, Pastor Nathaniel and Caitlin and the kids as sickness has hit their house uh, this morning. Uh, so that's why they're not here today, but please continue lifting them up. But I was thinking this morning, we had a, a great Sunday school class I got to sit in um, this morning and be a part of, of class uh, that meets in the library. And we really talked about Acts 2 and what it means to be part of the church and what they devoted themselves to. And it's so encouraging uh, just to think about that when God calls us into relationship with Him, He calls us into a community of other believers. And so I'm thankful for each one of you guys today. And I, I pray, you know, when we come and worship, uh, we don't come isolated when we gather and worship. We come and we encourage one another that we're here for one another. We're here to glorify God. And as we lift our voices in song and as we sing to God, we encourage and remind one another of the truths of Scripture. And I was thinking about uh, this passage from 2 Samuel uh, this morning, and I just want to read this to you guys as this was on my heart. And this is about King David, and it says that Gad came to David that day and said to him to go up and set up an altar to the Lord on the, on the, fle- the threshing floor of Aaronah, the Jebusite. David went up in obedience to God's command, just as the Lord had commanded him. And Aaron looked down and saw the king and his servants coming toward him. So he went out and paid homage to the king with his face to the ground. And Aaron said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David replied, To buy the threshing floor from you in order to build an altar to the Lord. So the plague on, on the people may be halted. And so David is preparing... Uh, to purchase this, to offer this sacrifice to God. And Aaron said to David, My lord, the king may take whatever he wants and offer it. Here are the oxen for a burnt offering and the threshing uh, sledges and ox yokes for the wood. Your majesty, Aaron gives everything here to the king. And he said to the king, May the lord your God accept you. And the king, David, answered Aaron, No. I insist on buying it from you for a price. For I will not offer to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And so David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 20 ounces of silver. He built an altar to the Lord there and offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord was receptive to his prayer for the land and the plague on Israel ended. And so you think about this. David is coming to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And Aaron offers, he says, hey, you don't have to pay anything for this. You can just give it. And he says, no, no, I'm not going to offer a sacrifice to the Lord that has cost me nothing. And I want us to think this morning about worship and even before we sing today. You know, we think about Jesus Christ. He was the sacrifice once and for all, the book of Hebrews tells us. 
And so we don't come offering uh, animal sacrifices anymore to appease for sin. We, we come knowing that Jesus has done it once and for all so that we can be free. And you think about that and you say, man, well, what do I bring to the Lord this morning then if, I, if I'm coming to worship King Jesus? And I think the book of, of Romans in chapter 12 really paints it out well for us where it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of... Of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And so as we come today to worship King Jesus, I want to urge you to not give praise that costs you nothing. To give to Jesus all that he is due. To sing like those who have been set free. To worship him in spirit and in truth so that God may be glorified. And so let's stand at this time as we begin our time of worship today and sing uh, to our King. Thank you. 
hands are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> um, I have our prayer list for today. The first would be uh, Rick and Jan Cox. They asked for a prayer for their son, Jason. A lot of us know him. He is in Poland on a mission trip, which sounds pretty exciting to me. So pray for safety, and he does have seizure issues, so we're praying that there will be no seizures. As he, his sleep routine and his medication routine gets interrupted, it's really important that he stays on a schedule, so the time differences and his busy schedule could interrupt that. So please pray for his health and his safety and the good trip back. Um, Jan says she's gotten good reports on her hip, and she'll be going back to the surgeon in two weeks. And I just texted her before church or during Sunday school and said we missed her. And she said she's just, uh, what did she say? She's, take, she's making her time or taking her time like she's in jail. You know what I mean? Doing her time. She said, I'm doing my time. So I know she hates being confined. So just pray for her and Rick as she does her time. 
and that she'll get back to church. And then to pray for grandchildren and great-grandchildren as they start a new school year. We, um, they have them at every level, elementary, middle, high, and college, to pray for a successful year and wisdom and choosing friends, making good choices, and giving them the, the desire to learn, and prayer for the parents and leading them to love and trust the Lord. And then our church that we want to pray for is Eastern Heights Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Chris Gustafson and his wife, Sheila. Will you bow with me, please? Gracious Heavenly Father, just be with Rick and Jan and Jason and all of Rick and Jan's family as kids go back to school, go back to college, uh, that they'll make good choices, that they'll be willing to learn. And we thank you that Jan's hip is healing well and that she'll be out and about again soon. And we play... We pray that um, Jason's mission trip is successful and he has no health issues and has safe travel back. We also play, pray for Eastern Heights and Chris and Sheila. Um, they're doing good work down on Highway 62, and we pray that you will continue to work through them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why don't you stay now at this time?
Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall ride to Thee. magnificent Lord and you are just worthy of all our praise Lord I, I thank you for the opportunity that we can gather here this morning Lord and praise you for who you are and for what you've done in our life Lord you saved us from sin Lord and you offer us grace and mercy daily Lord I pray that this message would speak to our hearts Lord and we would take it from these walls Lord and share it with those around us Lord your forgiveness your love Lord and so many blessings that you give us Lord, I pray that you would speak to the heart that is wanting to turn to you today, Lord, that they would make that decision today. And Lord, for those who uh, need to be rejuvenated and refreshed in you, Lord, I pray that they hear these words that would fall on their heart, Lord. Lord, uh, let us turn our ears to you now and our hearts to you as we meditate on your word. It's in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right. Uh, at this time, we're going to dismiss our kids uh, for our kids' connection, kids and volunteers. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention this earlier, was if you are visiting with us today or if you're a regular uh, attender at FBC, uh, either way, if you have any prayer requests, any needs, I want to invite you uh, to fill out one of our connection cards later on in the service. Uh, we'll be passing around our offering plate. You can feel free to drop that in. That, this allows us to know how we can pray for you, um, or if there's any ministry needs that you have, or any questions as we're going throughout the sermon, or the scripture this morning, if you're just like, man, I, I really have questions about baptism, or salvation, or, or, or what this means, please fill that out. Uh, we believe that God has called us to do life together, um, and so we don't think that we're in it alone. And then also, if you're visiting with us today, this is your first time here, fill this out and take this to our Connection Center. It's right when you leave out 
um, out of the sanctuary, you go to your right. And we're going to have a gift there for you today. Um, it'll be a, a nice treat uh, just to tell you that we love you and, and we're thankful that you're here today. Uh, so uh, I'm going to invite you now to open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. And we've been walking through Luke uh, for a while now and we're continuing in Luke 6 this morning. And we're talking about this idea that we've been talking about of being blessed. And what does that mean? And I want to remind you one of the, the things that we talked about a, a couple of weeks ago. One of the points that we talked about is that um, the word blessed has more to do with our status before God and our identity than it does with our circumstances. So you can be blessed if you're rich. You can be blessed if you're poor. You can be blessed when you're in good health. You can be blessed when you're suffering. You can be blessed when you're on the mountaintop. You can be blessed when you're in, in the valley if you're in Christ. Because blessing has more to do with our identity and our status before God. When you think about the idea of blessing, we talked about um, this idea of happy, fortunate, blissful, well-off. But most importantly, as I said, that we are blessed when we're in Christ. And, and we had talked recently about blessed are those are you who are poor. And this is what Jesus is talking about as he's looking at his disciples. Um, and he doesn't say all the poor are blessed, as we talked about. He talks, blessed are you who are poor, and, he, and he's talking to them that have left behind everything to follow him. And it's this picture, as we talked about previously, of those that are humble, those that have trusted in Christ, that they've recognized that they can't find righteousness in themselves. They're not putting hope in their wealth. They're trusting in Jesus. And so they find life in Him. And so blessed, as we talked about earlier, are those who realize their spiritual poverty and find their riches in Christ. And so this morning we're going to look at another aspect of blessed. And we're going to look at blessed are you who are hungry. And we're going to continue reading this morning in Luke 6, verses 20 uh, through 26. I invite you to turn there with me in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible today, uh, we have Bibles in our pew. I would love for you. Uh, we'd love for you to take that with you as a, cop, as a gift from us because we want everybody to have a copy of God's Word. And I encourage you to read with me and follow along because these aren't meant to be the preacher's words. These are, this is meant to be, this is God's Word uh, that we're looking at this morning. And so we believe this is for every believer to study, to meditate, uh, to apply it, and to obey the Word of God. And so it's important that we become students of the word, and that's for every Christian. Um, and so, Luke 6, verses 20 through 26. If you got it, say, I got it. All right. This is what the word of God has to say to us this morning. Then looking up at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who, hung, who are hungry now, because you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now because you will laugh. Blessed are you when, when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and slander you. Slander your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Take note, your reward is great in heaven. For this is the way their ancestors used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for if you, receive, you have received your comfort. Woe to you who are, who are now full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are la now laughing, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the false prophets. Let's pray. Uh, God, we pray this morning uh, that as we look at your word, God, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would fill us this morning. God, we pray that you'd have your way in this place, God. That your word would go forth in power. We know that it's living and active, God. We pray that you convict sin. That you bring comfort. That you bring peace where it's needed, God. That, that you draw people to yourself. And Jesus, I pray that we would just be left in awe of you today. God, I know we have so many things that, that we fill our life with. And God, I pray that this morning, that we would be hungry for you, God. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to starve ourselves of those things that are destroying us, God. And Lord, that we would worship you and find life today. Uh, God, I know there are many who put hope in dead religion and put hope in their works. And I pray that today 
that our eyes would be open not to do that, God, but that we would find life in you, that we would recognize that our righteousness is filthy rags. And God, we need your grace today. I pray that you would uh, help me as I preach, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would do what only you can do. And God, we pray that you would be pleased uh, with whatever happens in this place today. God, we want to be faithful to you, Lord. We need revival. God, we need uh, your Holy Spirit to do work that only you can do. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, blessed are you who are hungry. Have you ever been so hungry that you felt like you could eat almost anything? Anybody been there? Okay, we, we have a dog, a new dog, a new family member named Toby. Toby will eat anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything. It doesn't really matter how disgusting it is. And, and a lot of times, you know, we want to give him what's nutritious. We want to give him what fills him up. But he would rather eat whatever is on the ground. He'd rather eat grass. He'd rather eat... I may, I may not go into detail because I'm going to make somebody sick. My wife's already shaking her head. Uh, he would eat things that come out of his body and, and, and other things. Uh, so we have to keep Toby from doing that. And, and honestly, there have been times where Toby's trying to fill himself up with eating whatever is inside. And even when we're on walks, we have to like pull him. Because if people leave stuff on the ground, he'll eat whatever's there. But he'll make himself sick, physically sick. And he's done this. He just did it the other night. Uh, make him feel physically sick because he's digesting what's not good for him. And yet it's filling him up. And we have these nutritious things, this nutritious food, and he'll eat that too, but oftentimes he just eats whatever's there. And he doesn't realize what's, what's happening to him. And we, and we can do a lot of the same thing. And when we look at our text today, uh, Jesus is talking about more than just physical food. He's not saying everyone who is hungry is blessed. That's still the same thing like we said before uh, with those who are poor. It's blessed are you who are poor. Not just everyone who is poor. It's specifically talking to these disciples. He's saying blessed are you who are hungry now because you will be filled and so we think about this. We think about the disciples. There is a truth that they've left everything behind. And at times they're going to be hungry physically. And they find their satisfaction in the Son of Man that it will be worth it. And Jesus told them this. You think about when the disciples uh, were talking uh, and Jesus was talking with them about how difficult it is for, the rich man, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And Peter wants to emphasize what the disciples have done. And he says in Mark 10, 28, See, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus responds with this, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. And so there's a sense that if you're hungry, physical in this life, you look forward to the fact that God will take care of you and you're blessed. And you will be blessed in the kingdom of come, uh, that, that is to come. However, I think again, Jesus is saying more than just infinite, emphasizing physical hunger. I think he's talking about spiritual hunger today. And so I'll just ask you, even before we move on, what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for today? What are you filling your life with today? What is it that is satisfying you today? Or what are you attempting to find satisfaction in today? You think about this idea of hunger uh, to famish, to crave, to be hungered. Is everyone who is hungry blessed? No, they're not. You're not simply blessed for being hungry. Again, he's talking about to the specific group. He's talking to his disciples. They have a spiritual hunger, but what are they doing with that hunger? And so I'd ask you again, I said, what are you hungry for? Are you spiritually hungry today? Are you longing to experience the things of God today? 
What are you filling your life with? Where is your hope at today? Are you finding your satisfaction in Jesus Christ? Or are you filling your life with so much junk that you don't realize that you're starving spiritually today? There's this book um, I read in college. I'm going to go ahead and preface this book. This is not a light devotional read. This is not one like, okay, I might just casually uh, go into this. Uh, This is... A serious, uh, serious commitment. It's called A Call to Die by David Nasser. If you don't know David Nasser, he's an apologist, teacher, former Muslim that came to faith in Christ. And, and it's a 40-day journey of fasting from the world and feasting on God is, is the title of the book. It's pretty intense, but very, very powerful. I mean, it's just the Word of God, you know, going and, and being obedient to that. But what does that look like? Um, and so this, it's one of those books that before you read it, you need to count the cost. Um, and honestly, this book kind of wrecked me. I was not ready for it at the time. It's many years ago, and I was looking at it again this week, many years ago that I read this. And this is how it, part of the book goes. It says, a call to die, not just strong words from a theologian and a martyr, but our very call from Christ himself. Even though statistics on people dying are one out of one, We try to insulate ourselves in every way possible from the thought of death. We don't want to think about it. It's too morbid. It says, this 40-day journal, however, is not about physical death. On the contrary, in it we explore the meaning of spiritually dying to our desires so that Christ can fill us. Romans 6, 11 says, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Paul says in Galatians 2, 20, for I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Man who loved me and gave himself for me. So the very call to follow Jesus. I mean, I think sometimes we, we, we miss this because we think so much about salvation being a free gift, which it is a free gift. But if you go to follow Christ, it's going to cost you your life. That we take up our cross, that we die to self when we come to follow Jesus. That Jesus said, if any man would come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So it's a call to die to ourselves, to follow Jesus. And, And he goes on to talk about we must become less so that he can become greater. We must become a slave to righteousness so we can be set free. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so it's a life emptied of ourselves and filled with Christ. And so are you hungry for Jesus today? Are you hungry for the things of God? Do you desire a more intimate walk with Him? Do you desire for your life to be used for the glory of God? If so, we can't be filled with all the other stuff that we try to substitute for Christ. And so when Jesus is talking about this, it's an it's important call. And He's saying this as an encouragement, like, hey, you've, you've left everything to follow me. Uh, you have found your, your satisfaction in me. There's life in me. Follow me. Those who follow me will be blessed. And, he, and he's not talking about physical wealth. He's talking about true life being found in our treasure that is Jesus Christ. And so, are you hungry for Jesus? I'm going to keep saying that this morning. And I'm thinking about it myself. Am I really hungry for Jesus? Or have I filled my life up with so much stuff that I don't even recognize that I'm spiritually hungry. There's a story that he shares in this book. I talked about our dog, Toby, eating all sorts of different things. But there's a story that he shares in this book that's a little more serious. And it's about a man named Chris Hertz. And Chris was head of World Made Flesh Ministries in India, all around Asia. And so Uh, It's a ministry, they provide shelters for homeless people, those with AIDS and those infected with other diseases. And so Chris went to Calcutta with Mother Teresa at a place called the House of the Dying. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but the House of the Dying. And Calcutta is not only one of the largest cities of the world, but it also has some of the most poverty in the world. I mean, you literally find bodies on the sidewalks 
people that, that have died, of homeless that didn't make it. 70% of the homeless population has tuberculosis. And you think about all these things. And so they gave meals and shower shave, shared the gospel that so, so that people could die in peace with hope in, in Christ. And they also had a, a jar, and I'm going to try not to get too morbid here. Uh, but they also had a jar where people would cough up their sickness, basically. Just everything that was coming from their lungs. Um, and just, you think about lepers going through these different things. They had a syringe to extract disease from people. And AIDS was very rampant. And so, but he said the worst part was taking out the garbage. Because when you would take out the garbage, he would take it out and he begged not to do it because the stench was so bad. Um, you have disease and ragged clothing and half-eaten food. And he said it haunted him the first time he took out the garbage because he would walk out the back door to the dump and take it out. And children would come out of the alleys and rip open the garbage and eat whatever they could get, their, get in their mouths. And so he would scream, don't eat this garbage, it's full of disease and death. But they were so hungry that they ate garbage because that was all they could find. They had no other choice. And he said, I wept as I saw them scramble through spilled jars of disease, the clothing stained with rotten flesh and used syringes, trying to get scra scraps of last night's dinner that a dying person didn't eat. And he said, it's, it's a disturbing image. But then he made this point, in all honesty, how far are we from this spiritually? Can you see yourself feasting on the dumpster of this world? Many of us are like kids scrambling for garbage. We elbow each other at the, at the mall, at the theater, in the backseat, at home, at work, on the internet, and at school, and our hunger for food. But the food we long, we, we long for and fight for is rotten and diseased, and we eat it, and we eat it every time we fill our minds and our hearts with sexually suggestive movies or music, every time we make fun of somebody from whom Christ died, every time we value the the praise of people more than the praise of God, every time we live to get revenge on someone who has hurt us, and every time we try to put things in God's place in our hearts. We're so full of this junk that we aren't hungry for the food that really satisfies and nourishes us. Are you hungry for Jesus? I don't know, uh, I think about that, that image and it's just... Ugh. It's almost too much. And so I'd ask us today, what are we feasting on? I mean, we hear this story about the garbage, and, it, and it's so sad, but I, but I have to be honest that I'm guilty of substituting the things of God for the things of this world, creating or living for the things that do not satisfy, attempting to be filled with the world and following Christ, and you can't do both. You either have to be filled with Christ or you have to be filled with the world, but you can't follow Jesus and continue to be filled and feast on the world. It's an oxymoron to see that, say that I can do both. That I can live for Jesus and live for the world. That the Christian life is a call to die. It's a call to repentance. And so you can't come to Jesus by faith without re repenting and turning from sin and placing your trust in Christ. And, and Israel was guilty of this as well. Jeremiah 2, 11 through 13, it says, Has a nation changed its God? It's God's, even though they are no gods. But my people have changed their glory for that which was, does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. And so you think about this in this text. Israel has forgotten God. And instead of remembering their God, they had, turned, they had turned to worthless idols that did not satisfy. These idols were not gods. And so Jeremiah is using this illustration of a broken cistern that would leak in a fountain of living water. And so you have this cistern that's this man-made well or this tank that is dug in the ground to catch rainwater. And it cracks because it cracks and then it leaks over time. And the people had to continually line this rock limestone cisterns with plaster to try to do their best for keeping the water in. 
And so you have that versus this picture of living water, this spring that, could, that they could drink and be satisfied, which was their God. And so are we finding satisfaction in the true living water? Or are we so filled with other gods, other things, that we don't see that we're spiritually malnourished today? And so blessed are you who, hun- who are hungry now, Because you will be filled. This word filled could also be translated satisfied. That you can hunger, but if you don't fill your life with the right things, you can be bloated spiritually and not be satisfied. We think about John uh, 4 and the woman at the well. I'm sure many of us know this story. We've heard it before. That she's come to the well for water. Jesus is breaking all the the, uh, cultural Uh, rules by talking to this woman, by asking her uh, for a drink and and going to her. And yet she's thirsty. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you to give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And so even as I'm preaching right now, I get thirsty. And I want to take a drink of water. And this water is going to satisfy for a time. But there's going to become a time where I'm going to become thirsty again. Probably in just a few seconds when I set it down. But Jesus is saying, look, you drink from this well... It's going to satisfy you for for a time. But I can give you living water where you'll never be thirsty again. And he's talking about himself. That Jesus provides the satisfaction that we need. That he provides the water that we need. And so blessed are those who hunger and then are filled with Jesus. And I know today many of us, I'm sure, um, have have this testimony that it's easy to get distracted with things of this world and and we're missing out on the things of God and the things that He has for us. We're missing out on the rich relationship that is available to us because we're so filled up with other things. And and the Bible is clear about this in, in the book of Galatians that we either walk by the Spirit or we gratify the desires of the flesh. And and. The Apostle Paul says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And so he says, there's freedom in walking with Jesus. There's freedom in finding your satisfaction in Jesus. There's freedom in experiencing the Spirit-filled life that Christ offers to us but we have to stop feasting on the world and and seek God to desire him to seek after him and so are you hungry today are you hungry for Jesus I know there's been so many times in my life where I've gotten distracted and I've felt the emptiness of being spiritually malnourished that there's only one God that can truly satisfy And you may think I've experienced that satisfaction, but I want to tell you that it is a daily drinking uh, of this water. That's a daily feasting on the bread of life. That's a daily walk with Jesus. That we abide. The Bible talks about that in John 15. That we abide in Christ. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. And so it's a daily opening your Bible. It's a daily praying to Him and pouring out your heart. It's a daily walking in obedience to His Word. It's daily meditating and memorizing and studying the Word and allowing God to change you as you walk with Him. And it's daily experiencing new life in Christ. That the Christian life is is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And that God wants us to bear fruit and to experience life, but it comes 
uh, with full life being found in Him. And the more that you hunger for righteousness, the more that you seek Jesus, the more uh, that you dwell in Him, the more you will find a full life. That's what Jesus said, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Life is found in Jesus Christ. And so is that, is that the testimony of your life today? That you have joy because of Jesus? That you've been satisfied by Jesus? Are you like me today and you, and you get off track and you got to refocus? we got to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And it's so easy to get sidetracked with other things, especially when we're living in a fallen world. That we have an opportunity to experience life with, with Christ and, and knowing Him, walking with Him. In Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 through 13, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, <clears throat> this is the Lord's declaration, plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I think about this, and we even talked about this in, in Sunday school this morning. We'll hit on this, that we have these experiences where we go away. You think about the youth camp last week. I got to hear uh, their testimonies online because I was preaching at another church uh, last Sunday, filling in for Jimmy. But you think about this experience. Students go away, and they get out of their regular routine, get away from being filled with, with other things, and they, and they really focus on feasting on Jesus, finding their satisfaction in Him. And then they're transformed as they get away, get out of the regular routine, and spend time with the Lord and with, with other believers, seeking Him and, and desiring Him. I think about my, my own walk um, with Christ, and some of the times where, where I've had, that I look back and I say, man, I mean, there's many times along the way where, where we experience God on a daily basis, but I think about some of those experiences that really stand out. And very often, it was on mission trips, or times when, when I stepped away uh, to, be, uh, to go on mission uh, with a group, focused on Jesus, time devoted to Him, getting out of the regular routine, starving ourselves of the world to feast on Jesus. And we find full life. And, and those are some of the most memorable times of, of my life. And I, and I would say I've heard from others of you that you can point to different times where God spoke to you as you were stepping out of the norm to get away with Him or to serve Him in, in a specific way. And it's so easy to get distracted. I mean, I think about um, even being a believer for a long time, being called into ministry, knowing that I was called to ministry at the age of 18, and then getting sidetracked in the pursuit of worldly wealth and getting so full of other things and not recognizing that God was calling me to be in vocational ministry because I was so filled with everything else. And so I want to encourage you today that if you want to fill your life what is, with what is essential, you want to fill your life with what is satisfied, you want to fill your life with the one who is worthy, the only one who's worthy of our worship, the only one who's worthy of our praise, the only one who's worthy of us pouring our lives out for his name's sake is Jesus Christ. There's hope in no other name. There's satisfaction in no other name. It's not found in a church building. It's not found in uh, religious traditions. It's not found in your own morality. It's not found in your intellect. It's found in dying to ourselves and saying, Jesus, I am starving and I need you to save me. I need you to give me full life that I want to seek you. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. And those that come by, to Jesus by repentance and faith, by turning from our sin and trusting in him, find true life and satisfaction satisfaction in Jesus Christ, that those who are hungry and seek Jesus will be filled. And so I'd ask you today, have you experienced that satisfaction? I hope that you have. I look back and that was the turning point in my life is when, when I heard the gospel and God convicted me of my sin and he drew me to himself and I repented of my sins and trusted in Christ that that's the day I found real life. But that abundant life is available every day to those who walk with Christ. That it's not a one-time experience, but that God wants to use you today. He wants to use your life for His glory. But we have to turn away from feasting on those other things 
and feast on Jesus Christ. Only Jesus satisfies. And so the question comes, why does he say, blessed are you who are hungry now for you will be filled? Well, there's a sense as Christians, that we live in this already not yet state. We're redeemed, but we, yet we live in this fallen, broken world with sin all around us. We deal with the daily brokenness, including the brokenness in ourselves. That we're being satisfied by Jesus, and yet our full redemption has not yet come. And there will be a day where we, we, where we have fully glorified bodies in heaven, where we worship Jesus, and there will be no more hunger, for we will be filled to the glory of God. And that's why we look at Revelation 7, 16 through 17, that says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all, every tear from their eyes. Praise God. Praise God. That is our hope. That only King Jesus can satisfy. Only King Jesus is worthy of our praise. Only King Jesus can give us life today. Only King Jesus has paid the debt for our sins. Are you feasting on Jesus? Are you hungry for Jesus? And, and the great thing is when we come to Jesus and we've emptied ourselves out and we have <clears throat> tried and, and found the dissatisfaction of other things, when we come hungry, He's a God that is more than willing to fill us. He's a God that's more than willing to give us His Holy Spirit to indwell us and to use us for His glory. God has things planned in advance for you to do. Those of us who are in Christ, God already has things planned in advance, good works that He has planned for your life. And this goes beyond just, just daily Bible study or, or even church attendance. But am I pursuing Jesus in every area of my life, my living for the glory of God? And, and the sad truth is, when we look at at Luke 6, 25, he says, Woe to you who are now full, for you will be hungry. Well, what does it mean by that? Well, it's talking about those who choose to be filled with this world and that they will not have life and satisfaction in Christ. That they'll be satisfied in this world with their wealth or whatever they choose to feed on. But in the end, they'll be separated from God eternally in hell. And that Christ has made a way for us uh, to be redeemed. That we have a loving God that comes after us. And so I'd ask you this morning, will you bring your spiritual hunger to Jesus? Will you feast on Him? Will you seek Him? And this is more than just us feasting uh, or individually feasting, but we're feasting together as believers that we're encouraging one another, that we're reminding one another of the, of the things of God. And not only that we're feasting here, but we're going outside of this building and into our workplaces, into our neighborhoods, into our families, and we're saying, man, I know where you can get bread. I know a God that truly satisfies. I know a God that, that loves you. I know a God that died for you, that he paid the debt for your sin. I know a God that, that wants a relationship with you. And I know a God uh, that says that, that those who are hungry now will be filled. Are you feasting on Jesus? I invite our worship team to come now as we move into a time of invitation. All right, I'm, I'm going to pray for us um, during this time. And as I pray, if you're here today, um, we're going to pray and then we're going to just provide an opportunity to respond. We'll have some of our prayer team here. Cassie, if you can come and, and Allison as well. Um, just to be available to pray with people. If you're here today and you've never trusted in Christ, I would invite you after I pray as we sing this song to come. I'd love to pray with you and talk with you about what it means to, to follow Jesus, about salvation. If you're here today and you have questions or, or you just need prayer for, for something God's doing in your heart, or you just realize, man, I, I've been trying to find my satisfaction in other places. And I need 
I need Jesus in my life. I need to turn from these things. However God's dealing with you, I invite you during this time, after I pray and as we sing, that, that you would come uh, for prayer. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for being a God that, that does satisfy. That, Lord, without you, God, we are starving. Lord, that we're empty. Lord, we thank you for being a compassionate God that cares about people. That came, that came to seek and to save the lost. I thank you for being a God that, that offers us the opportunity to come to you when we're weary, when we're heavy laden, God. God, I thank you that your mercies are new every morning and that great is your faithfulness, God. I pray during this time, Lord, that we would be a church that is hungry for the things of God, that we're hungry to, to not only know you, God, but to be obedient to your word, to do what you've called us to do. Lord, that we would step in obedience, step out in obedience to your commands, Lord. And God, that we wouldn't try to manufacture anything in our own power, God, but that your Holy Spirit would use us for your glory. Please, God, during this time, Lord, we ask that you move on our hearts, give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see. And Lord, uh, please do great things. I pray if there's any here that have never trusted in Christ, that today would be a day of salvation uh, for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you guys to stand, and the altar's going to be open. Like I said, I'll be here, and others will be here as well uh, for prayer.
quick, uh, quick announcements. One, uh, we invite everybody to come uh, to our Back to School Bash uh, that is going to be uh, next Sunday night. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the Connection Center. It's going to be the Charlestown Activity Park. Great opportunity uh, to come together and fellowship as a church family and then also just to, to love on our community as well. I invite you guys to come, be a part of that. Uh, we've got sign-up sheets for, for a couple different things uh, that we need, but this is a free event, great opportunity to invite people to come uh, to mini-golf and roller skating and, and food and, and just time with family and just uh, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a practical way uh, for our community. So I invite you guys uh, to that. Uh, next Sunday, we are starting a four-week new members class. I'll be teaching that. Um, and invite you if you've been interested in membership at FBC um, or have questions about that. And coming to the class does not commit you to, to membership. It's more so learning about what we believe, uh, what, uh, what we, we know the, the Scripture teaches about being part of the body of Christ and what it means to, to commit to Christ and, and the church. And just to answer any questions about that as well. So that's next Sunday at, at 930. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, being a part of that, uh, please email Sandy. The email's in the in the bulletin, just so we have enough materials for everyone. Uh, but that's office at fbctown.com. Uh, send an email, or you can let me know today as well. And then one, one other thing is we have our FBC prayer retreat coming up on August the 10th to, from 9 to 4 p.m. I really, I don't know, I don't know how, how emphatically I can uh, emphasize how important uh, prayer is uh, to our church. Uh, this is the lifeblood of our church. And this is going to be a great day. It's, it's happening in our SEBA building uh, from 9 to 4 p.m. August 10th. That's Saturday. We have uh, Pastor Coy still, which I've been talking to him. He's been a missionary overseas, friends with Jimmy Bledsoe, uh, which, which many of you all know, Jimmy and Diana. And he's going to be leading us that day. Uh, Rob Killebrew, who was our former worship pastor at Refuge, is going to be coming to lead us in worship as well. It's going to be a great time. Uh, but I encourage you, uh, to get signed up for that, um, it's uh, $25, $25, which you can be, can be paid through the app, uh, through our church app, which you can download if you don't have it. Um, there's a QR code in the bulletin, or you can write a check. But I also want to tell you, do not let money, finances, be an obstacle to you coming. Uh, we want everybody to be a part of this, and, and we will eliminate that obstacle, if, if that is an obstacle, because uh, we, we want to be a church that's coming together in prayer. It's going to be a great time. So I invite you to be a part of that. Please get registered. There's registration forms um, in the bulletin as well. Uh, I think that's everything. I'm sure I forgot something, but somebody will let me know later. Uh, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer now for our tithes and offerings. God, I thank you so much for being a God that provides us with every good and perfect gift, Lord, that it's all from you. And Lord, we, we thank you uh, for being a God that, that knows our needs, Lord, and God, that calls us to give as an act of worship to you. Pray, Lord, that we could take, uh, take these finances, God, on everything that you've given us, Lord. We know it comes straight from your hand. And as we give, Lord, that we would use these, uh, these gifts, Lord, in, in a wise way, God, that you give us wisdom. Lord, that it could be used for the furthering of your gospel and for the mission that you've called us to. God, that more people would come to saving faith in Jesus. And Lord, that uh, we could be faithful to give and to go today. Uh, please multiply these, God, uh, for your name's sake and for your glory. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, almost every Sunday I'm in here, you'll see me back there at that camera, <clears throat> but uh, 
These guys up here, sorry, I've got the old Howe Valley crud going on this morning. <clears throat> These guys up here are such a blessing to this church. And there's other people out here, too, that, that also come up here and do the same thing. But they're such a blessing. We're so, we're so blessed in this church to have such a talented praise band. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, and um, the pastor was talking about some blessings. Uh, and this just kept coming into my mind. I've been going through some very tough times for a little while now, for a minute, and it's always good to know that I can go back to the Lord, even though I've been away from Him, and, and I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, I get away from reading, I get away from praying, but He's always He's always there with those arms wide open to come back. So keep that in mind, too. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for your uh, mighty Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for your uh, mighty blessings that you put upon us, Heavenly Father. Uh, Lord, be with us as we go out into the community. Uh, help us to uh, give the lost this, uh, this water, this living water that, uh, that you talk about, Heavenly Father. Uh, quench their thirst, Heavenly Father, to follow you. And it's in your Lord's name that we pray. Amen.